Hi, uh, my name is Charlie Fairbairn and I am on the Pro No Coders team for Flutterflow. And I thought today that I would do a slight extension to the video that I did previously, which is about creating adaptive applications. And if you haven't watched that, do go back to that one first before you watch this. But what we covered in that last video was how to make um, a screen layout, such as the one that I'm demonstrating now, uh, that is completely flexible. And if you remember rightly, what it meant is that in this direction here, we've got one, two, three, four, vertical container areas if you like and in the center one here we've got one two three four going in the horizontal direction however because of the way that the uh containers are set we set that one of these ones over here would disappear if we went into the mobile viewport and the one one of the ones on the bottom here by putting that um a responsive across through the mobile view on that one so as we came in so if we just look at these uh this one here is going to vanish when uh we get into a narrower viewport and that can be demonstrated if i come right in narrow over here we can say in the width direction we've now only got one two three and in the vertical direction we've only got one two three so so two of those containers have been made invisible by using this property over here now uh, what i want to do is to introduce another adaptive principle that can come in uh, particularly handy and it's going to be revolving around uh, the use of a grid uh, I think the technique can be applied to um, uh, other things too, but it's specifically in this tutorial, we're going to cover the grid. Now, uh, to demonstrate this better, I think I'm probably going to take this first container here, which if you recall was given a flex value of two, and I'm going to uh, reduce that down to one. So we've now got a one, two, one, one. In fact, I'm even going to make this middle container over here have a flex value of three. So that's going to be three times bigger, um, wider than the other three that we've got over here now the reason why i want to do that of course if, if you recall if we come in here it's always going to say uh three times bigger until we get into the mobile view where one of them is going to disappear and you see ah, uh, it is actually that one um we see we've got a one one and a one uh but um maybe that's actually not what i wanted to do i don't want that one to disappear uh, when we get down to the mobile view, um, for reasons that I'll explain in a minute, maybe I want this one to disappear instead. Because I want to put into this uh, area here, I want to put into that um, a grid. And um, so let's go ahead and uh, and do that. So that container, I'm going to add to it a grid. So we've got our grid view there. And into our grid view, uh, just for the sake of the example, we're going to put in an image. And there, there is the image. Now, if it's going to be a grid view, uh, then obviously it has to have uh, lots of elements in there. So I'm actually going to uh, kind of fake that a little bit um, in so far as I'm going to use this button up here. I'm going to give it a, a variable name of uh, grid. It doesn't really matter here. And the value we're going to use, we're going to get that from our sample data. And that's going to be a list of images. And it doesn't really matter what we put in the uh, the width and the height here. I don't think let's just put 100 by 100 to keep it square. Um, and we're going to have a minimum list this length of uh, let's just say 15 and have a maximum length of 15 so we're always going to get 15 and we can confirm that and let's not forget to confirm over here as well which i often do there we go and you can see that we've got now a, a grid of images there um, and the image is i've set that to be the random image uh, over here in the path. So we've got our images over here. Now, the feature that I want to introduce to you is back in the grid view over here, because it's all very well to say, okay, we're going to have, say, these images that are set to be, let's go down to the grid here, a spacing of three wide. That would look okay probably out here. It's getting a little bit cramped over here. But if we start going into here, we don't really want that to be three wide anymore. It would probably be more appropriate if that became two wide uh, two wide or one wide and we can do that very very simply 
And so if we go back onto the grid image over here and we uh, look at the cross axis count, that's now become a variable, which is extremely useful, uh, which means that we can go in there and we see that there's this new thing that we can use over here called responsive value. So we're saying that if we're looking at a small viewport, we're going to put that, let's say, as a one. If it's a medium, we'll put that as a two. And if it is bigger than that, we'll leave it at three. Three looked OK for maybe a tablet and a desktop. And uh, the default value else three it is there. Um, yes. And the default value. Well, let's just put one in for good. Set. Let's say the default value would be three. Um, not valid. Why not? Seems I lost my number one up here along the along the way. Let's do that again. Let's do three and let's confirm. Right. So now what happens as we shrink? We start off with three. We come across and come in. And yes, so that's a bit disappointing. You'd think it's not changing. Well, we've got to understand that this is in the uh, view um the web view if you like of the construction and because we've got logic going on over here in the grid view it's not going to be actually apparent what happens until we actually run the application so we do actually have to run it in order to be able to see this logic kick in so let's do that in these other viewpoints it, it's, it stretches out to three items as opposed to in these viewports um they uh, it, it narrows down to one so we have got that particular part of it right let me just go back quickly and see if I can't work out why we're not getting any images. Hmm, while I'm at it, I'm also going to go here. I noticed that I've got a one, a one. So we never saw the two view, view and the three. That's what I wanted to do. We've got a one, a two, a three, and a default of a three. And uh, why didn't the images show up? Not that it matters too much for the purpose of this particular uh, tutorial, though I don't like showing... Um, uh, what I'm showing at the moment and um, I'm going to let's just do the instant reload on that to see whether miraculously it's decided it is going to uh, service some images or not. I have noticed once before that it did just fix itself for no reason. Well, today it's not doing it. All right. So we've now gone out to the, the to this wider port here. We see, see we've got the three. Um, we got the three and the one. And what I really wanted to do perhaps is on this one here to see under what width. Let's have a look if we change that to 500 on the width. There should be a point at which we get to. And that's really what I was trying to de demonstrate is that depending on the uh, viewport you've got. So we've now got one grid uh, column going on there in the middle one well it's reset itself now but had it been a narrower uh tablet it would have been two and then on the wide version it would have been three um so if we're just going to go back and recap on how we did that we did that by saying that we can rather than in the grid view using a fixed width across we can use this particular feature which is the uh, conditional breakpoint of when that becomes one, two, and three. And it's another very, very useful feature, uh, which will keep your um, application completely uh, adaptive. Now, do remember that you're not going to see that kick in in this viewport because it requires logic and logic is only ever executed like actions and other things in the Flutterflow application when we run them and actually compile them. Now I am just going to go and prove to myself that I can fix the image problem before this video is over but in terms of the actual adaptiveness of the uh, application I think I've uh, demonstrated how that is done. OK, I haven't actually uh, quite solved the mystery of the sample image data. I don't normally use that, and I'm sure no one would actually use that in a real application. Uh, but what we can demonstrate here is the same thing, which is that we've now got images there uh, that are three wide on the desktop, one wide on the uh, mobile phone and if we were to have a narrow tablet say of 500 I think we decided there uh, it would flick to two so that's another adaptive feature that you can use within this already adaptive grid that we've created in the previous tutorial so I hope that's uh, helpful to you um, and thank you for uh, watching and thank you for listening 
I've got a couple more of these uh, shorter tutorial videos in the pipeline at the moment. So uh, do subscribe to the channel. Uh, the next one I'm going to be doing is how to get a drop down menu to dictate what is in another drop down menu. So, for instance, if you have a drop down menu that says uh, famous actors, it would have a list of actors, James Dean, uh, Marilyn Monroe. And if you changed that to a list of uh, sports stars, then the second drop down menu would show a list of sports stars in there. So how one menu dictates uh, how the other one uh, is displayed. That's going to be in the next one. And then I'm doing an advanced tutorial on how to bring in AI generated images into your Flutterflow project and into Firebase in particular. This is an advanced project, but um, uh, these are the two tutorials that I will be publishing very shortly. So do stay tuned. Thank you very much indeed for watching and listening to the video, and I hope to see you next time. Thank you.